Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. Welcome to Dubbo, New South Wales, and today I'm about to show you a compilation of classics in three separate locations. So better go grab your favourite chair as I bring you another Classic Restos on the road. Bathurst, Orange and Dubbo are three great places. Dubbo is the gateway to the outback if you want to keep on going. Dubbo has a country feel that gives you just about any city facility that you're after. From a typical Dubbo sunset through to a park run, Dubbo awaits you. Nearby Lake Burundong will keep you there for days soaking up the sun. Wellington Caves will amaze you. The old Dubbo Jail takes you back to a different time in Australia. And as for Dubbo Zoo, well that is one of the nicest animal havens you will ever find. Don't just take my word for it, come to Dubbo and soak up Australiana. Meet Dean Cole, a Shannon's Regional Development Officer covering around a 150 kilometre radius of Dubbo. Dean has the passion and it shows as there's more floor area in his two sheds than there is in his house. There's a 1980 Sigma that cannot be sneezed at, a 1973 XA Coupe and an original 1976 LX Tirana where the engine could be part of your mantelpiece. These ingredients are simmering in the pot, so grab your plate and cop a serve of this. This is my XA Falcon two-door 1973 model. Um, I've owned the car for approximately 24 years. I bought it uh, when I was 19, just out of school. I borrowed some money off mum and uh, I still owe it 200 bucks actually. I paid $900 for it, it had five months red Joe. It was tough as nails, it was matte black. Big fat set of sliders on it, had a six cylinder in it with a ball drawn, a rear end and a four speed in it. And uh, we drove it around until the red Joe ran out and I took it off the road and I decided to restore it. Um, the passion for me I suppose started with Mad Max. My dad brought home a VHS video back when I was four years old and I watched that movie well in excess of a hundred times. I can remember reenacting scenes for the girls in kindergarten. So it was actually an R-rated movie. I'm not sure of the ethics behind that, but um, it certainly planted a seed in me. And one day I was always going to own a Falcon hardtop and I always wanted a black one. And um, so it took me about three years to fix the car up the first time round. Um, and I liken it a lot to um, Eric Banner's movie, um, Love the Beast. So it was like a campfire that all my mates sort of hung around and, and we forged some lifelong friendships. Um, and everyone had their go at the car. A mate of mine painted it, a mate of mine helped me with the engine, um, a mate of mine helped me with the interior, a mate of mine helped me with the wiring, and I still have these friends today. And we, we worked with what we had at the time. So resources were skint, I didn't have a lot of money. Um, and obviously not a lot of experience in building a car. So it was a brilliant looking car. It was a bit rough around the edges, but um, I loved it. And I drove it for a long time. I drove the wheels off it. We did a lot with it. When I got married in 2014, uh, my wife and I were in Las Vegas enjoying our honeymoon. And I got a terrible telephone call on our last night there. And it was, it was my house sitter telling me that my shed was on fire. And of course my beloved XA Falcon was inside that shed. And I was obviously stricken with grief and had no idea what to expect. He rang me while the fire was happening so I could hear all the firemen in the background, I could hear the paint cans exploding. It was a traumatic time. I was 12,000 k's away and, and I really didn't know what I was up against. The car had only just copped a respray just before the wedding so it was looking mint and obviously I was a bit distraught and I just asked him to send me some photographs. I said, I don't care about anything else, just tell me how bad's the coupe. And 
he was reluctant to put it into words, so he sent me three photographs, and I had those photographs for three days trying to establish whether I could or couldn't get this car fixed again, because that's all I really cared about. I got home and, and obviously quite devastatingly found that everything in the shed was gone. The car was the only thing that, that even resembled anything. And um, I, I hesitated for a while because I didn't know whether I could fix the car again because it was pretty wrecked. It was buckled um, and obviously I was worried about the structural integrity of it. Um, but I managed to find a panel beater who would help me do the job and he worked wonders with the car. So the, um, the turret was the, the bit that I was most worried about, the lead had all come out of the seams. Um, it was buckled but he managed to beat it, shrink it, file it, work hard in it, back to a point where it was structurally sound. Um, and we kept going um, until we had a straight car again, which took about uh, took about 10 months for the paint and panel and um, then I brought the car back here where I did the rest of the work, re uh, did the engine again um, and put it all back together. So it was um, quite a process, uh, it took about 14 months, I averaged about 30 hours a week on it, I got a bit OC on it, um, but it's a job that required pretty much everything doing. It's one thing about fire is it, it uh, requires you to do absolutely everything from scratch. So I couldn't cut any corners this time like I have done with previous builds and I had insurance to help me out so um, I built the car that I've always wanted. Um, so I just made a deal with myself that this was going to be an opportunity rather than a setback and I fixed everything on the car that I was never happy with in the first place and um, I've ended up with a, with a pretty good product. It's been built now for about six years and there's been no problems in regard to the fire and um, yeah, we're pretty happy with the result. So the driveline is the 351 Cleveland. It's um, got a decent cam in it. Um, it's got backed up by a C4 automatic with a stall converter and a nine inch diff running three, two, five gears. Uh, more of a cruiser. Um, we're just about to treat it to a set of alloy heads, which I've always wanted. And uh, yeah, it should unleash the fury with a bit of luck. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, it's been a reliable old bus, sounds good. Um, and does everything I want it to. Got air conditioning this time around um, and it's quite comfortable to drive in. The feeling I get when I drive this car is essentially it's an extension of my personality. So I built this car to reflect everything I like in motor cars and I'm especially proud to drive it because I built the thing. Um, I've had it for 24 years. I think it's the best looking car on the road. I'm um, certainly going to be biased, but it drives well and, um, and it certainly turns heads. And yeah, I'm proud as punch to own it. Um, honestly, I couldn't think of any other car I'd much rather drive. So it's always had a place in my heart since I was a kid and um, I'll never let go of it. They'll bury me in that car. The Mini Cooper S is a real classic. It won the Monte Carlo Rally four times, plus the Bathurst 500. For us, it's like the Italian job every time we drive it. You know, Michael Caine racing through the streets of Turin. The good thing is, Shannons really understand our passion. That's why Shannons ensure our classic, our daily drive, and now even our home. Call Shannons on 13 46 46. Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Now, Dean, Regional Development Officer for Shannons, how is it in the Central West? Mate, the car scene's pretty strong in the Central West. It has been for a long time. Um, with the advent of Cars and Coffee, uh, which is a monthly now, bi-monthly event, um, it's gotten a lot of cars out of the, out of the sheds um, in conjunction with the uh, new Reg A laws yep. in regard to classic cars. Yep. Um, it's really brought the scene alive out here. And um, classic cars seems to be... Um, less about 
trophies and more about the cars. I like the cars and coffee concept. I think it's good. It's also good for people that uh, might have a bit of a, a busy day. They they might not want to be tied up all day at one location. They can just go for their coffee, have a bit of a chat for you know an hour or so, and then get back home again. So it keeps them in in touch with the with their friends and their cars. I mean, that's all part of it. At the end of the day. Yeah, mate. It's um. It's, it's been good for um, relationship building between the clubs as well. Um, it breaks down a lot of barriers. And, and like I said, it's just about the cars in the end. And uh, you can come and go as you please. And it's, um, it's been the single biggest um, boost for the, the Dubbo car scene. And uh, there's plenty of cars out there, but uh, not all of them get out of the shed. And this just prompts people to, um, to get out and enjoy their cars. And it's the variety which takes us to this next vehicle. Now, Dean, your grandfather's car and... Uh, uh, God bless him. He he went ten years ago. You got his Sigma, 1980 Sigma. 1980 Chrysler Sigma. Now I remember the uh, the advertising copy for the Sigma back then. Sigma spoils you again. Well, this one here is spoiling you with 400 horsepower. Yeah, it's a pretty handy car. I <laughs> I um I left it uh, as Pop had it. He loved this car. Um, he bought it as an ex demonstrator. But, uh, but yeah, but hang on, as Pop. Pop had the car. He didn't have that. No, no. Imagine, imagine if Pop had that. <laughs> Would have got him to the paper shop a lot quicker. Unbelievable what you've done here. So, okay, run us through the specs on what, what you've done to the Astron. The big Astron, they used to use a bit of oil back in the day, but that's okay. They had an overactive oil pump. Oh, yeah, mate. It was always um, check the petrol top up the oil every time you went to the survey. Uh, the old Astron motor, there's not too many of them that weren't smoky at the traffic lights. This one is um, a two-litre turbocharged engine based on the 1982 Sigmas. Um, so, but it's it's quite a fair bit different from its original guys. It's running um, Aries forged pistons. It's um, an O-ring block, copper head gasket, running head studs. Um, it has a head off a late model Magna, which um, gives it bigger ports and roller rockers. Um, so, and it also gives it fuel injection. Um, it's run by a Motec fuel injector in fuel injection computer, um, and it runs a, a turbocharger bigger than your head. Good on you, Dean. It, it's very neat. I love what you've done. I, I really do. When when Dean brought me into the shed and I saw the Sigma, he said, this was Pop's car. And I thought, oh, yeah, well, that's nice. Isn't that nice to keep your grandfather's car? Then the bonnet went up and then bang, kapow. Have a look at that. That's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of wow factor there, Dean. I was always going to um, I was always going to make a sleeper out of it. Originally, I wanted to put a road tree in it, but this engine came up and it pays a lot of homage to the car's vintage and made it a lot easier to get registered to. So it's actually, you know, a Sigma engine and uh, it's just, it's got to be one of the crazier ones around though. Dean, I have to say one thing, you and your engines, you don't mess around. Yeah, mate, it's always good to have a bit of grunt under the bonnet and, uh, and it's um, even nicer to make them look good too, I think. How cool is it? We've got a, a rock solid, 100% original Tirana here from 1976, lifting up the bonnet. Here's the smorgasbord again. Wow. Yeah, mate, it's a fairly simple little engine, but it's a good combination. Everything's uh, matched well together. It's putting out about 350 horses, and in a little car like a Tirana, it gets it along pretty good. It's nice too, mate. I love your attention to detail once again. You do your own painting here. The, the rocket covers, it looks too packed to me. Yes, mate, yeah. No, I've always done my own painting. It's a um, bit of a hobby. I enjoy doing it more than anything else. The, the detailing's the bit I like about um, doing up the cars. Dean, on that note, just want to thank you so much for organising uh, the people for these two episodes of Classic Restos in Dubbo and for all the magnificent work that you're doing for Shannon's as well around the region. Well done. Uh, my pleasure, Fletch. Thanks very much for coming out here, mate. I really appreciate you coming to showcase some of uh, Dubbo's classic cars and uh, I hope you've enjoyed your stay. We've enjoyed having you, mate. Thank you, mate. My pleasure. Now stick around, stay in your favourite chair because after the break we'll be at our second Dubbo location. Bikes have always been part of my life, so when it comes to insurance for a new bike or an older classic, Shannon's is my choice. They're one of Australia's leading motorcycle insurance providers. With flexible cover for bikes that are laid up while being restored or on club registration. And cover for your daily ride too. If you're passionate about your bike, insure it with Shannon's. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. If you own a classic or two, make sure they're insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And the Shannon's in-house productions await you. Shannon's Club TV, Legends of Motorsport, Driven, 
end of an era, and of course, classic restos. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. Second location now on a property around about 10 k's out of Dubbo. There's a few cars lying around outside and there's a couple of sheds as well. But first, let's find out a little about these classics behind me. Hey Greg, how you doing? Yeah, pretty good, thanks Fletch. How are you? Good mate, thanks for the invite. No, you're right, anytime. I love your property. Thank you, you. You've got Thank bits you. and pieces spread everywhere. What a haven. It is, it is, it's good. It's a mechanical mecca on the land. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Okay, now the first point of interest, uh, the old Holdens here, fascinated by the history. What can you tell us about them? Uh, well, basically they're spare parts, but the N1, the van up the back there, it's uh, it's going to be done one day, but it's the old Gilgandra Bakery van, so I'm led to believe, so there's a bit of history there, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. How do you feel when you walk out in your property and you see these old girls here? Do you ever feel sorry for them? I uh, would have liked to have get, got them a lot earlier than what I got them. Yeah. Would have been nice. Well, I'm a big believer of, of keeping these cars, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Either that or they went to the crusher 20 years ago. I'd rather see the cars lined up in a paddock, at least they can be donor parts cars or at least enjoy the aesthetics of them, rather than knowing that they would have they would have been gone years ago. Yep, yep, for sure. Yep. So we've had a few of them here and a few fellas have got them to restore, but that's it now, I'll keep these ones. All right, inside one of Greg's sheds now, a bit warmer in here, mate. It's heaps good in here, not raining either. <laughs> Greg, I've gone back to the United States with this vehicle behind us, the Chevrolet, the Green Briere. Yes, it is, yeah, 1965. Wow, the people mover from the 60s. It is, that one's a nine-seater also. Yeah. It's in good condition. Not too bad, yeah, pretty happy with it. Yeah, yeah. pretty pretty cool. I like the lines of these things, they're, they're nice, aren't they? Nice, yeah, nice colours and everything too. Okay, first thing that comes to mind, Greg, it's uh, missing its lid. What's going on there? Uh, just had a little bit of rust in the gutter, probably only a foot long, but we've taken it right off to do the whole job. So. Yeah. It's the only way to do it, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Big, big job, though. So when we look at a people mover for 1965, Greg, nine people, twin carb, a very optimistic 100 miles an hour speedo. Wow, talk about punching above their weight. I think so. I don't think it'll get there. <laughs> Greg, inside a brand new shed, what's going on here? Fletch, another shed, another car. All right, so how long have you had this car? Uh, this one, I think we've had it 18 years. It's been registered about 15. Yep, yeah, and we had to... We bought it, it was um, disassembled and ready for a resto, and it's a pretty good car, no rust. That's pretty cool that you've kept the 1985 Rego sticker on the quarter window. I have, I left that on there on purpose. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's a nice touch. Okay, engine specs, what have you done there? There's something pretty angry coming up through the bonnet there. Yeah, it's got a, a mild 350 in it, it's supercharged, it's, uh, it's, it's healthy, it's not a world beater, but it's, and it's nice to drive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a nice car. Um, you're um, lucky to to have this car, the um, the HK Monaros. They they are out there, but look, it's like all these things now. It's a it's a special car. It's a model that went to Bathurst. Um, there's a lot of history with the HK. Um, certainly, very very collectible car indeed. Greg, it's good to see that you've kept some things original here. The door cards, the dashboard, just the yeah. seats have been trimmed. The, they've been trimmed. They're in velour, just so we didn't burn our legs when we got in there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and the 140 mile an hour speedo, that's one thing that's always featured in these. It is, yeah, yeah, would probably do that. History of the car, Greg, what can you tell us? Um, yeah, we bought it from Cara, from Greg Jordan, um, we're lucky enough to buy it off him, yeah, and he knows we've still got it, so he's very happy as far as I'm led to believe. Greg, just want to thank you for the opportunity, mate, out here in the sticks, showing us around and a couple of your favourite cars. Thank you. Anytime, Fletch. Location number three on today's show, around about 10 kilometres from the last one. It's an unassuming shed behind me. It's got a chimney flue, so I guess it's warm. Let's go inside and take a closer look. The bike over my right shoulders, a bike my dad's had for since the late 70s in one form or another. It used to be in a rigid frame. It used to drag race it at Castle Ray and the odd burnout at the back of the pub, as they do. Um, yeah, he sat around the shed here for a good while and then we finally got into it. He gave it to me and I ended up doing some work together on it. We decided to do a modern version with the put Suzuki inverted forks in the front of it off a GSX R1000. Put a change around, put a Norton Interstate tank on it, change the oil tank, custom oil tank, custom tail section, lots of stuff on it. You would call it a cafe racer. Uh, the only difference with them, they have normally have clip on handlebars where I've got like a flat trucker style handlebar just because we didn't want to put more recesses in the tank for the handlebars. 
uh, custom fuel cap and stuff. And our logo, uh, Dad used to do some custom work, so we had a Johnson logo on the side of it put on it. Yeah, engine-wise, it's at the moment it's just a stock 750. It used to have a modified one, uh, 810 kit. Um, all the heads were all the fins off the heads and that, but it ended up getting too hot and it cooked that motor, so we put a standard one in it, but just detailed it all. Uh, the hot rod over my shoulder was my late dad's 1934 Ford. Dad's had uh, all parts of the car since the early 80s. He got ended up with a chassis and acquired a cowl and a few other bits over the years. And he'd been always been too busy doing cars for myself and other people that he never got a chance to get his finished. We got stuck into it and to try to get it done for Dad's 80 if it was the plan, but sadly Dad passed before we got that done. I haven't done a lot to it in the last four years since Dad passed, but I'm just having a go at it now to try and get, get it done. The car means everything to me, really. It's Dad's had it that long and just I'm just disappointed I never got the chance to get it done for him when he was alive. The interest Dad had was um, he used to uh, do motorbike racing, he used to race production bikes at Bathurst, like in the late 60s and in the 50s. He had an FJ that Hemi J built with his brother, Norm Johnson in Sydney. They still climb that and race at the Bathurst and that, so Dad's always been into motorsport and bikes and hot rods and just enjoy doing custom work for people. Yeah, Dad will never be gone while this car's around or while I'm doing what, what he was doing. It's a little bit different to hot rod running a Falcon 6. A lot of them are LS powered or they put a Chev in just for that. I just stuck with the six cylinder, a little bit different. Um, and it's something we have used in a lot of other projects and yeah, just basic, simple. No, they're a pretty good engine, the Falcon 6s. You never hear of them blowing up or having bottom end issues. So hopefully it should be good when the five speed will make it a lot better and a lot of torque. So it should be a good engine. It's eventually going to be gloss black. It just depends on time. I'm trying to get the car done for summer nats in January. So it might end up with just a gloss black chassis and a satin black body until I get around to getting gloss paint on it. Interior will be vintage race car inspired, um, beaded, bead rolled aluminium door trims, very basic race car feel. What makes it extra special to me, not just being Dad's project, uh, the body is one of 20 bodies made. This is number 19, made by Elvis. So the limited production, what they call a 34 special body. And the same with the petrol cap above me, that's number 19 as well. It matches the body. I get a lot of support from my wife, Jo, and the legacy of this car will continue on. And I, I'm glad to be able to share a little bit of this with you today. Hud, thank you for being such an integral part of today's episode. Now, I met you, you look familiar. I, do you know where that was? Uh, Narrowmine Car and Bike Show. About 2015. Yeah, around about then. There you go. Search for that episode on the Shannon's Club. On that note, I want to thank you and, uh, and your wife, Joanne, for the opportunity to film here this afternoon. Uh, in the legacy and the footsteps of your dad to finish this hot rod, uh, it's turning out absolutely brilliant so far, mate, and I can't wait to see this on the road finished. Thank you for that, Fletch. Much appreciated. Okay, now you're going to go through with it and you're going to get it on the road, right? For sure. Okay. Yep. Because I'll, I'll be back. D definitely. You're always welcome. <laughs> Good on you, Hart. Well done, mate. Thank you. Well, how cool was that? I hope you really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos as a part one being filmed in Dubbo, New South Wales. And on next week's show as a part two, I have something extra special lined up for you being filmed here in Dubbo as well. This week's episode featured Dean, the Regional Development Officer for Shannon's Dubbo region and some of his collection, then Greg with some of his and then Hud with some of his. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching.
you can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries.